Welcome to Intuitive Transformations with your host, Sylvia Henderson, and discover tools, wisdom, and inspiration that will empower you to transform your life. Sylvia is an intuitive life coach and energy healer with a growing practice that is focused on empowering others to be more of who they want to be. For the next hour, join Sylvia and explore and unravel anything in the way of you creating the life that you would love to live on the OM Times Radio Network. Everyone and welcome to the Intuitive Transformations radio show where you will find tools you can use to change and transform your life right here on Own Times Radio FM, the voice of consciousness. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I am an intuitive and an energy healer. And if you would like to learn more about me and the work that I do, visit my website at intuitivetransformations.net. And while you're there, please be sure to sign up for my news you can use newsletter so that I can keep you informed of my upcoming events. You can find a link to sign up for my newsletter right there on the home page of my website. And if you were listening last week, I announced that Belinda Womack and I were hosting a free 75-minute live interactive group healing experience that's designed to awaken your inner alchemist. So here's the thing. Originally, Belinda and I planned to hold our very first Awaken Your Inner Alchemist on this Tuesday, May 17th. Well, I found out early last week that a very important feature on the technological platform that we plan to use for this live event had been discontinued by the company that owned the platform. So I hope you're booing and hissing because I know I was booing and hissing when I found out that news. And because Belinda and I really do want this event to be everything that we planned for it to be for you and for the rest of our um, clients and people who have shown interest by signing up on our email list, we have had to push the date out just a bit. Uh, So the new date is going to be Thursday, May 26. So please do accept my sincere apologies to all of you who are really looking forward to experiencing Awaken Your Inner Alchemist on Tuesday. I can say this, that last week we had five planets in retrograde, which is really pretty big stuff. So to be honest, I wasn't quite that surprised that we hit a speed bump while we were trying to launch this on Tuesday. And as you already know, if you've listened to my show for any length of time, I do believe there are no accidents in the universe. It's important that we always trust the divine and know that perfect and divine timing is always working in our in our favor. Well, fortunately, Mercury, which is the planet that rules communication and technology, does go direct before we actually do launch on May 26th. So I trust and believe that this little hiccup was divine intervention, uh, just stepping in and ensuring that what Belinda and I have created will be as impactful and even possibly even more possible, (laughs) I'm sorry, even possibly more powerful than we had originally planned for it to be. So um, we have a new platform. Again, it's going to happen on the 26th. And if you are unfamiliar with Belinda Womack, she has been on my show twice and she is wonderful. Uh, Belinda is a beautiful healer of the inner child. She's a clear channel for the 12 archangels. So with Belinda and I united together in a powerful group of all of you, this is going to be something really special and an exciting experience for everyone who participates. Um, And I'm also really excited that we're going to offer this for free. This very first one will be free because Belinda and I both, you know, we we love humanity. You know, we we do what we do because we know we're called to do what we do. And we really want to help as many people as we possibly can because we know that there is a lot of chaos out there in our world today and our spiritually awakening souls need as much support on the ground as possible so that we can all return to self-love and step into our true divine nature of inner power, strength, wisdom, and a really wonderful connection with source and our inner knowing. 
so that everyone can create a life that they love living instead of living a life that they wish they didn't have. So if you're wondering what Awaken Your Inner Alchemist is all about, it's going. It's an ongoing group webinar experience that includes healing, teaching, and also an interactive Q&A where you'll get to ask questions about what's going on in your own life and receive some quality answers and some solutions to help you move forward with more freedom. Um, after our initial free group healing, uh, Awaken Your Inner Alchemist will be available on a monthly basis starting on Sunday, June 5th, and that's going to be for only $39 a session. And, and when you combine my um, what I typically charge and what Belinda typically charges, that's a $500 value for only $39. So it's a wonderful deal. If you miss the free one, um, then you can still partake of this amazing experience because we're going to do it at least once a month. So again, if you would like to participate in this month's free group healing, you have to sign up on my website, intuitivetransformations.net, news you can use. And that way, when the email announcement goes out this week, you'll be able to participate. And I really would love to have you there and join us. So on to the show. Today, I have a wonderful guest to share with you all. Her name is Kara Bradley, and Kara has created quite a remarkable life for herself by doing something that she calls living her life on the verge. She is a former professional athlete, a mental strength coach, and she founded her own yoga center, and she's an author and a dynamic speaker in hot demand. And Kara is here today to talk about what living on the verge is and how you can live your life on the verge as well. Before I bring Kara on, let me tell you a little bit more about this remarkable, amazing woman. In addition to being the author of On the Verge, Wake Up, Show Up, and Shine, Kara Bradley is a former professional skater and a passionate teacher of yoga, meditation, and fitness who has been in the trenches of personal transformation as a mental strength coach for over three decades at her Verge Yoga Center, which is located in Pennsylvania. Kara Bradley is the host of the podcast, Real Women, Courageous Wisdom. She also teaches international retreats, conducts corporate training sessions, and presents yoga and mindfulness programs at conferences and universities. Kara has brought her mental strength coaching techniques to athletic teams such as Villanova University's football team and Penn State's men's basketball team. And today, Kara is joining us from her home in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Kara Bradley, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Sylvia, for that beautiful introduction. It's great to be here. Well, I am just absolutely thrilled to have you here because I think that the listeners are really going to appreciate uh, what you have to say about how they can really li- live a very amazing life by following some of the strategies and practices that you include in your book. So, Kara, for everyone who's listening who has not yet had the opportunity to read your brand new book, can you please tell them what is The Verge? Mm-hmm. The Verge is just my way of describing this moment, and I I go into it in the book about how it came about, but really what I've experienced in my own life and as a teacher for many, many years is that when we're able to show up in this moment fully available and fully engaged for whatever is arising, we really do shine. We do whatever it is we're meant to do in this moment better, whether it be listening or or acting, or not acting, or not speaking. We just know better when we're present. And I think everybody knows that. It's just, this is my way of communicating what is so often indescribable for people, is this understanding of of how do I be present? How do I show up for my life and experience my life fully? And the way I put it is just, is when we're present, we feel more awake and fully alive. You know, I love how you put that, and I and I really do appreciate how you said 
it is a little bit of an indescribable experience. But I think you've done a very good job just now. And so when we live from this place, it really is that everything changes in our lives. Right, right. And and what's so interesting to me is in teaching for so many years is that we, we all just focus on what we're not doing, what we're not being, and what we need to do to be better. But what I offer is a way to perhaps start looking at those moments, those glimpses, when you feel awake and alive, when you feel like you're present. Let's start to get to know that from a different perspective and then just looking at what we're not doing. And that may change things. It did for me. You know, I love that because that really falls into alignment with um, what a lot of people call the law of attraction. I call it the law of alignment myself, but it really is whatever you focus on does expand. I I know we're getting ready to go into a break, and uh, everyone, please stay tuned. When we return, we're going to continue our conversation with Kara Bradley. We're talking about her brand new book, which is called On the Verge, Wake Up, Show Up, and Shine. And when we continue our conversation, we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can focus on where you are seeing that moment of being on the verge versus when you're not, which is how we typically are trained to look at the problem, not for the solution. So we should be having music any minute now. This is interesting. Well, Kara, I think they forgot to cue us in for a break. You want to continue talking then? (laughs) Absolutely. I can continue talking for a long time. (laughs) Oh, there we are. Okay. They're a little slow, everyone. Here we go. There's our our music that's going to lead us into the break. Uh, When we return, more of Kara Bradley on Intuitive Transformations Radio with Sylvia Henderson. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And before we went into the break, um, which was a little bit of a delay, (laughs) 
and caught me off guard. That was the first time that that's ever happened to me. And, and people who have listened to the show can vouch for that. But um, Kara was talking about how we really should train our focus on what is going well, where we're finding those moments where we're being really present and, versus you know, faulting ourselves and finding where we have failed to make that connection or create that awareness. So um, Kara, being fully awake and fully alive is really what life should be about. And and you talk about this in your book quite a bit. Mm, yes. And, and so, <laughs> so why, why do you believe that it is so difficult for us to to be fully alive and fully awake and fully present in our lives. And I know you just pinpointed one of the key one with key areas that uh, we um, tend to fault ourselves or, or look at what's broken, what's not working versus the opposite. Yeah. I, I, I believe that again, this isn't really our fault, so to speak, because it's cultural conditioning. We're just conditioned to judge. We're conditioned to compare and to feel unworthy. But what I'm pointing to is perhaps the possibility that you are already having these amazing experiences every day when you are fully present, when you do feel awake and alive, when you are compassionate, when you are tapping into your potential. So what I, what I, guide readers to do is to start taking note and start recognizing the small moments that are happening all the time. When you feel your senses light up, when you see life in high definition, when you know instinctively what you need to do, these moments are happening. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, Let's say you're driving home from work and you stop at a red light. And you look up and you see this glorious sunset and it takes your breath away for a moment. And for that moment, you're not thinking about work and you're not thinking about home and you're not thinking about what you don't have. You are truly experiencing the brilliance of the sunset and yourself observing the sunset. And this is just one of the many, many ways that we can start to recognize how alive and brilliant and magnificent our lives are all the time, just beyond the busyness. You know, I love how you are speaking of being aware even just of nature, the sunsets and our beautiful surroundings. I hear, I live in the Pacific Northwest where everything is green. I mean, literally every street is just filled with flora and green trees and vibrancy. And I have to confess I forget. But in those moments when I'm present, it's a magical moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I call that high definition living. When we're present, our senses light up. Uh, Actually, you know, it's not, not that our senses, our seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching actually don't do anything different. It's just that we become more aware. So it feels like everything is more vivid. Instead of seeing life in that analog TV screen, we're seeing life in high def. Everything appears brighter and we taste, our tastes are more distinct and our hearing is more sensitive. This is what it feels like to be present and to experience our lives fully. And we can do it all the time in the conference room, on the sports field, in the car, in front of a friend. It, it, we can live this way most of the time. Well, with that as a promise, it certainly does lead one to want to practice that more often and take note of it, as you suggest in your book. So in your book, you also talk about how you started your journey of learning how to unlock human potential around the age of 19 years old. And I'm just curious, what was it about human potential and finding a way to unlock what is really possible that intrigued you at such a young age? Well, I had this extraordinary experience that was about as ordinary a feeling as I've ever had ever experienced. And I was running my last track race in college and I had 
gone off on my own before the race and had settled myself in a way I'd never done before. I was started to repeat to myself, personal best, personal best, personal best. I wanted to beat my record. And I did beat my record and by a lot. And what I had done was tapped into an incredible strength and clarity and confidence I'd never experienced before, yet it felt perfectly natural and ordinary. And I felt as genuinely me as I'd ever felt before. And that, that experience stayed with me. And I thought, wow, when I am able to settle my doubts and step beyond my fears and relax my nervous system and actually not try so hard, I'm able to be really more me than ever before. And when I'm really just genuinely me, beyond doubt, fear, judgment, comparison, worry, all that stuff that we all carry around, when I'm able to just settle into the moment, I shine. I shine big time in a way that I can't do if I'm riddled with fear and doubt. And so I started searching at 19 as I started searching for ways to, to go back and experience that extraordinary ordinariness that I had tapped into on the track that day. Wow. This is a great segue into something else that you talk about in your book, which is the busy mind, which <laughs> I like mm. to call the monkey mind or the monkey brain. And, you know, in reality, we live in a world today where everyone is not accessing or relaxing their nervous system. They are stuck in fight, flight, and when they're overthinking, um, frozen. And, and so what can people do to help turn off the excessive chatter that is so thought consuming so that they can more easily relax their nervous system? Mm, it's, a, it's a great question and an important question. The way I look at it and, and how I teach is, is, first of all, we all have to just understand and agree that we are, we are all conditioned to think excessively. It's just what's happened in our culture. And so we all have this busy mind. But what is so wonderful and exciting is, that we know right now is that we can train our minds to be different. We can actually train our minds to change the physiology of how much we think, how much we get involved in our thoughts. But what I want to say is that, yes, when we accept that we all have busy minds, that's one thing. But then in addition, and this is really what my message is about, in addition, I think it's just as important to recognize that there are moments happening every day when we are in between thoughts. They may be a split, a split second of time, which is what I call the verge, that split second of time when we're right here, right now, when we can start to recognize these moments exist already, that we're not just these bad monkey minds, you know, that can't stop thinking. There are these beautiful moments, these powerful moments that are happening in your life already, whether they be the moment you wake up in the morning and you look out your window or the moment before you close your eyes, or when you read your child a story at night. There are these precious moments of presence already happening. Let's focus there a little bit, as well as focusing on how we settle and steady our busy mind. We can do that, but let's also focus on the good out there that's happening already. I absolutely agree with you 110% on that, Kara. And then one of the things that I read about in your book, uh, one of the great techniques that I personally love is using the breath to help you do that by um, breathing into the count of three and exhaling, holding for a moment, and then exhaling to the count of six and holding and, and repeating that process. That's a great way not, not only to oxygenize your body and revitalize your brain cells, but just to calm down your central nervous system, right? Oh, yeah. So when we elongate our exhale, even just if you do it like two or three or four times, you breathe in a way that you're just lengthening your exhale. It has a real calming effect on our nervous system. So it's a great, simple, simple way 
for us to stabilize and steady and synchronize. And, and I talk about this a lot in the book with the practices that I offer that these are really simple ways. Like when we learned how to ride a bike, we were, we'd kind of tip over, right? Mm -hmm. When we had the training wheels. And so we have to go through that, that time of practice in the beginning when we're, when we're using those training wheels and that's where guided practices are so awesome. But then there does come a time when we're able to recognize immediately when we feel imbalanced, when we're out of sync, when we're not in alignment. And we'll have these simple tools like counting a few breaths or elongating breaths. Or one of my favorite is sky gazing. It's just taking a couple of minutes and looking at the sky that will help us to rebalance ourselves, realign really quickly, in fact. So by sky gazing, you mean just being present and just focusing on the sky and the clouds. and the- Yeah. Yeah. You could just look at the sky for a minute or two and, and, and breathe out into the sky. Just every breath, just take a big, uh, big, long exhale and just feel the expansiveness of what you're looking at. Even if it's just a little bit of sky through the window. You just keep your eyes up there for a minute or two, and it can that can help settle you. We have these tremendous tools at our fingertips. We don't have to suffer in the busy mind all the time. And I love that it's so accessible. I mean, your breath is always there. Why not utilize that? And, you know, we all have a beautiful sky, whether there's rain coming out of it like we do often here in the Pacific Northwest, or if it's clear and blue, there is something just very magical about connecting with nature in that way and, and recognizing the expansiveness of it. Yes. Yes. And and the way that I teach, because I've been teaching for so long and have t- taught thousands and thousands of people is that I know if if things are too laborious and they take too much time, we're much less likely to do them consistently. So my my message is you start small, stay steady, and you build from there. Start small, couple of minutes, stay steady every day the best you can, and you'll build a practice from there. I love that because it really is about the consistency. I know so often what people want to do is they want, you know, we're so primed to finish or complete a project instead of allowing yourself to experience the journey one step at a time, just like walking. Everyone, we're going into another break. And please, I invite you, use your breath during this time. And when we return, there'll be more of Carrie Bradley. We'll be right back after this after this message. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds.
Om Times. Well, everyone, welcome back to Intuitive Transformations Radio on OMTimes.com. And I have with me Kara Bradley, and she has been sharing some insights and information that you can find in her brand new book, On the Verge, Wake Up, Show Up, and Shine. And um, I do want to talk a little bit about what you mean by shine, Kara, because I think that that's a word that can be interpreted in many different ways, and you have a very specific um, definition for it as it relates to being on the verge. Mm. So when we when we show up, just like I did on the track when I was 19, when we show up in the moment fully available, meaning we're not carrying the baggage of our past or not carrying the, the intricacies of worry and doubt and fear, when we're just able to be present in the moment, we shine. And what I mean by that is that we have access to our incredible potential, Potential meaning the strength that we have within us, our capacity to be compassionate. And also what's so wonderful about when we show up in the moment is that there's a, a, a remarkable sense of, of peace and ease that arises even if we're in the middle of a challenge, even if we're in the middle of a really kind of sucky moment, so to speak, there, there's a peace that arises and greets us when we are present. We also have access to this intelligence that is always available to us through our body, through our heart. We have just these amazing capacities to know what to do in the moment. It's just that we get in our own way by thinking and by hanging on to grudges and and issues and negative emotions. I'm so glad that you explained it that way because this leads into another question I have because in your book, you talk about an experience that occurred just last year in 2015 when one of your very close friends contacted you to let you know that their 13-year-old son had gone missing. And would you just mind sharing a little bit about that story and why it is so important to view life and especially something as dramatic as a missing child or a similar dramatic event through an open heart. And that really was a moment when you were, everyone was really in the middle of a challenge. And and really, what does it mean to look at life through an open heart? Mm. I, it brought a whole new meaning for me, you know, in the before that event happened, I think, you know, open heart, I thought loving kindness, I thought compassion, you know, all the things that we're, we're taught or that we study. But when this experience happened, and I was with my best friends of 25 years when their 13 year old went missing, uh, through the days, the four days of searching, thousands of people in our community searching in the snow for this young boy who had not not showed any signs of distress in the past. I stood by the side of my friends, especially my my friend uh, Rebecca, the mother, and um, I stood by her side, and that's all I did. And I was completely available to her. I never experienced what it means to be so available for another human being. I did not have my own story. I could not carry my own fear. Everything about my life was put on hold so that I could be there in complete love for her. And whatever she needed to go through, whether it be a cry or a laugh, or um, she, I sat with her as she, um, when they found his body, he had taken his own life. Um, and we spent another week after that um, preparing for his memorial, I just laid everything about my own personality aside and was a fully, fully available for her. It was extraordinary. It changed my life completely. I can only imagine. And when I hear you say, I was there for her, I stood by her side, I think quite often what happens when people have something of that magnitude happen 
that many people go into, how can I fix this? How can I rearrange it? How can I make it different? That's not what you did. Oh, that's so, that's so right. I didn't cook. I didn't clean. You know, we can get very busy in times of challenge because it's really a lot to sit in the moment, especially one as horrific as that. And there were plenty of people scurrying around, and I felt like it was my calling. I was present enough to at least know what I was being called to do. And that was truly just to hold space for her, Mm -hmm. to hold space and to be there for her, uh, whether she needed to lean right or lean left or have a cry or just have a laugh. And there was laughter, and there was an extraordinary amount of peace. And this is what I believe is so remarkable about our lives, but that we so often miss because we're caught in the race of thinking. And we think we give importance, so much importance to thinking that we miss these beautiful moments. And those beautiful moments could happen in a courtroom. They could happen in a conference room. They can happen in the grocery store. There's beautiful moments of interacting with one another or being in nature or just experience, experiencing humanity as, as, as we dance this, this dance. It's happening for us right now. I love that. I mean, there's so much power in the simplicity of presence. So much power there that had you not, I, my guess is, had you not already been in the practices and doing the things that you had done throughout your life, especially as being um, the founder and the owner of a yoga center um, and doing your own work, I, I think that it would have been difficult for you to have been as present as you were. I I think so. I I do think so. I think my practices, years and years of looking at myself, knowing my own patterns, knowing my habits, understanding my shadows, and also understanding what, what it feels like. So this is the whole point, Sylvia. There is a distinct sense of ordinariness when we are present. There is just this distinct sense of ease of balance, of harmony, even in the most challenging moments, there is still this, it's like a scent of peace when we're present. And so when we can start to recognize and glimpse these moments more often in our daily lives, we will know in those really big moments exactly what it feels like so that we can step in and shine brightly in those extraordinary moments. And I believe I really did shine for my friend and for her family and for Cayman who passed in that moment. I felt like I was able to shine for them. I can feel that in what you're sharing. I, I, I feel that that is, is definitely um, truth and what a powerful gift you had to offer for them during that time. It's, you know, it's interesting you talk about it. I think that is our natural state that that sense of presence. I I have a friend who has a daycare and I go there, I hold the babies and they're so present. And, and I, that's before all the conditioning begins. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, and I do believe that is really truly our, our natural state. So your book is divided into five parts, wake up and show up your natural state, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, verge practices, verge strategies, and show up and shine. Would you mind talking a little bit about what you call verge practices? Yes. So, so I, I offer these practices and strategies and, and they're, they're, they're just subtly different, but the, the practices are distinctive ways that you can start to understand and become familiar with your busy mind which, and there are a lot of mindfulness practices in there. And then also how to start to recognize and glimpse your natural state or the space beyond your busy mind. This is what I call living on the verge. So there are four distinct practices. The first one is called notice this moment. And notice this moment is a simple way, um, a, a, a toolbox of mindfulness practices that sky gazing was one, the counting the breath, um, extending your, your exhale in, in a short five-minute practice is another. There's a collection of ways to begin noticing the moment that you're in. 
notice it. What am I doing? How am I cooking? How am I cleaning? How am I speaking? So these are ways to become more mindful mindful, or to pay attention on purpose more often. Another way, and one of my favorites, is called move my body. And move my body simply means when you're moving your body and synchronizing your breath and your body in a rhythm, which could be as simple as walking or hiking or running or swimming, there is this, there is this harmony that arises when we are in rhythm, just like probably you, Sylvia, when you're rocking the baby. There's mm-hmm. this sense of settledness that comes about. So we can use a five-minute walk around the block or at lunchtime or even a simple moving meditation where you're lifting and lowering your arms as a way to help us to settle and stabilize and to shift into that natural state more often. Meet My Mind is a beginner meditation practice. So now we're becoming a little bit more formal in sitting down and practicing becoming familiar with our busy mind in meditation. And then the fourth one, one of my favorites, is notes to self. It's starting to become aware of our internal dialogue, the chatter that's happening internally, and to start shifting that that chatter by offering ourselves these reminders, questions, and intentions throughout our day as a way to shift from perhaps being busy or being more negative to talking in a more positive and friendly and even humorous type of way. I I really love that. That internal dialogue is when you can change that, it really does change everything. Just being aware of your internal dialogue, first of all, will change and transform your life. It's amazing when you start fo- when you start paying attention to it, how much it's actually going behind the scenes. Oh, yes, yes. And just being kind, and that's one of the strategies, is really, it, it's a game changer. When we could start to just talk to ourselves in a kind, humorous way, as opposed to just beating ourselves up, it just lightens everything. It really does. It really does. Well, I know we're getting ready to head into another break, everyone. Um, and again, I just want to remind you, I'm speaking with Kara Bradley, We're talking about her brand new book, On the Verge, Wake Up, Show Up, and Shine. She is a mental strength coach. And this book has some wonderful strategies and ideas that you can implement into your life. When we return, we'll talk a little bit more about this and about a brand new app you can get and download on your mobile device. We'll be back in a moment. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. The name is Bob. James Bond. No, the name is Joe, the Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. <laughs> so tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on oldtimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Healing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. 
Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Well, welcome back. I can't believe that this show is almost over. It has been just fantastic having you on with us, Kara. Um, I want you to tell everyone how they can learn more about you and also talk a little bit about this brand new app that you have that has to do with your book on The Verge. Mm. Well, I was really excited about um, about my app. But first, I'll tell you my website is karabradley.net. And that's Kara with a C dot net not com. And I have loads of stuff on there, a lot of uh, videos and podcasts and all the the great stuff that I'm, I'm doing all the time because I'm so excited about this topic. And as you said before, Sylvia, I wrote it down. You know, I also am in love with humanity and I have a deep, deep trust in us as humans and our capacity to uh, to wake up in this world and to show up for each other more fully and more open-hearted. And so I've dedicated my life to helping people uncover, unblock, and, and step into and experience life in, in its most beautiful essence. So um, thank you for saying that before. I lit up when you said that. Well, um, I guess but- we're in sync, my dear. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> So many of us are becoming, which is so exciting. It is. So so I developed this app for my book, and it's interesting because I thought that a lot of books had apps until I wrote it into my manuscript, and my publish, publisher said, well, you know, what is this about this app? Tell us. And I said, well, a lot of books have apps. And, and, and I found out that, no, a lot of books don't yet. <laughs> so I feel really excited that I have this supportive app called On The Verge that where I recorded guided audio practices and guided video, some movement practices, some of my yoga classes um, on the app so that you can have it on your phone and practice. A lot of these these practices are really short. Some of them are five, eight minutes. And so it, it'll give you the opportunity to practice these verge practices and and ha- there's a meditation timer on there. There's also a, a great uh, notes to self. I was talking about those reminders, questions, and intentions. And you can set them to pop up on your phone with a little ding or a notification throughout the day. Just, you know, reminding you to, to, uh, to check in. Where are you? Take a couple of breaths. Show up right now type of thing. I love it. Now, is this available in iTunes and also for Android? It's coming in Android, and it's on the App Store now. In the, the iTunes. Beautiful. Yes. It's, free. it's free, baby. Even better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful is that? So everyone listening um, after the show, make sure you go to iTunes and download that app so that you can connect with some of these practices and strategies, implement them in your life right away. You'll get to hear Kara's lovely voice once again as she guides you through these meditations. So what a wonderful experience that um, you're providing to um, people on the planet, Kara. Thank you. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the Verge strategies that you have. You've already pointed to one, which is be kind, but you also have be in sync, let it go, let it be, and be aware. Mm. The, the strategies, like I was saying before, it's kind of like the, the riding the bicycle thing. You know, at first when we're riding the bicycle, we leaning right, leaning left, we have the training wheels. But, but after a while, we kind of just know how to balance ourselves. Well, I trust that our brilliant beings, our brilliant bodies and minds and hearts know how, instinctively how to be in balance, how to be in harmony. We already know this. And so when we can start to st- recognize it by asking ourselves questions all day long, we will start to find intuitively find our balance much more easily. So be be aware. 
is a way of just asking yourself, where am I right now? Am I here? Where am I? In just asking the question, we've already answered it. We don't even need to go into dialogue about it. Some of my favorite questions about becoming more aware more often are just, can I show up right now? You can ask that question even in a traffic jam. Can I show up right now fully? Can I, can I, what, why am I resisting this moment? It's one of my favorites. Why, why am I resisting? You don't have to answer it because that goes into your thinking mind. You can just ask the question. And so be aware, be kind. We can ask ourselves these questions. Can I be kind? Can I be kinder to myself? Can I, can I be humorous right now? Can I be gentle? Is there a way for me to be gentle with myself in this situation right now? So these are inquiries that we ask. Now, one of my all-time favorites and a lot of people's favorites are, um, is the strategy, let it go, let it be. Let it go, let it be. It is in the surrender. It is in the allowing of life. It is in the allowing flow to happen, as you said earlier on, Sylvia, that we truly step into the moment fully. And so these, these strategies are just little tidbits, again, very, very simple common sense ways to continue to recognize when we're in the moment, when we're present, when we're shining, and not paying as much attention to what's not happening, but to what is happening. You know, Karen, and there's such a distinction between surrender and giving up. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people, when, I, um, when I'm having a, a private session, I'll say, you know, you just have to surrender. I don't want to give up is what I hear back. And I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. This is about allowing, allowing the moment to move through you instead of holding on to it and gripping tightly and um, fighting it. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because my personal little practice for letting it go, letting it be, is that I squeeze my hand really tight. When, when I feel resistance come up to a conversation, to a situation, I will squeeze my hand really tight in a fist and then I open it slowly. And I may have to do that a couple of times and I open it. And you're right. It isn't about accepting the moment so much as it is about allowing, allowing the moment to be just as it is and learning how to be present for what is arising It doesn't mean being at the office doormat, right? It doesn't mean always holding back, you know, an honest discussion. It means sitting in the moment fully and recognizing what what life is calling you to do right now. It's just a more mindful way. Yes. Yeah, I love that. That that's that's fantastic. So when I think of a professional athlete. The phrase, life is not a spectator sport. <laughs> mm. I, I, I think of it being tattooed across their heart, across their soul, and probably on a body part somewhere. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it, it brings up this, um, the traditional uh, thought about that speaks of endurance, of, of powering through, of, you know, something like what the media does on a Coca-Cola ad, you know? Mm-hmm. So what, what do you mean when you say life is not a spectator sport for someone who's not a professional athlete? Mm, I love that. <laughs> I love that because in many ways we, we miss our lives. We keep missing moments because we're stuck in busyness in our mind or caught in drama. And so we could sit on the sidelines and watch our lives pass by just like a basketball game happening or watching a a swim meet or, or some other kind of sport that you may watch. Or we can get onto the field and get into the game of our own lives. So if we can remember that we keep missing the moment when we're not present, we miss. We miss many moments. But instead to remind ourselves to show up to what is happening right now, the sunset, the smell of the coffee, the traffic jam, the crying child, the beautiful, you know, meeting of the gaze of your partner 
or the hug or whatever it is to step in fully to the center of that moment, this moment is like stepping onto the field of your life. And so that's what I use with that phrase. And I recognize it may not, may not completely connect with everybody, but I, but I do think that we all want to experience our lives fully and to not miss, miss any more moments of our lives. And, you know, I had a question for you, and it was to ask you what the definition of fearlessness is, but mm-hmm. I think you really just defined it. Mm-hmm. Fearlessness is really just to show up fully, no matter what is happening, right here in our truthfulness, in our genuineness, not, not being afraid of what may arise is really being that curious human being that we are about, wow, this is my life. This really is my life. And I like how you say being that curious being, because quite often what people will do in any experience is create these conclusions about what things mean based upon their past history and their old experience and their old conditioning. You know, to be quite honest, we really don't know what anything really means that shows up in our lives. But when we allow ourselves to be curious, it allows things to be more flexible for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, well put. Well put. So, So when we can just start to recognize these moments of aliveness, of being awake and alive and bright and open and and, and, and ready, just ready for whatever is arising. This is what I mean by living on the verge. I love it. Kara Bradley, thank you so very much for joining us on the show. You have been an absolute delight. I'm so grateful to have had you here. Mm, thank you, Sylvia. It's been wonderful. You're so very welcome. And everyone listening, Kara's book is called On the Verge. Wake up, show up, and shine. For more information about Kara, go to karabradley.net. And that's B-R-A-D-L-E-Y. And Kara is C-A-R-A. And while you're at it, go online, go to that iTunes app store, and download for free her On The Verge app. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'll be back again next week. Know that you are loved and life is on your side. (laughs) Bye-bye.